And welcome back, everyone. Hope you guys grabbed some popcorn and grab a drink. Enjoyed the trailers. We're back for round two. Uh, this is Squad Ops One Life um, Wednesday event. Um, this is Operation Chainlink. Uh, if you weren't here for the first round, uh, if you weren't here uh, uh, giving us a, a watch, I'm going to go I'm gonna go over the assets that each team gets and the, uh, the operation overview. So the assets... Um, they're going to be coming in uh, for Russia is two times ARs, one times light anti-tank, the RPG, uh, one times a grenade launcher, one times medic. Uh, that's per squad. Uh, Russia also gets uh, one MTLB, uh, which is the tracked vehicle, the transport, one logistics truck, one trans truck, one FOB, two HMGs. Uh, militia defending the trench gets two AR, one lat, one scout, one medic. Uh, they get a tech. Three lodges, a fob, an HMG, and a mortar. Um, so the overview for the operation is pretty simple, um, but it's an exciting one. Uh, militia forces uh, set up in a trench. They set up a fob in the defensive position in a trench. They need to be defending it. Russian forces are going to move into the fob location and, and eliminate it. Militia wins if they're able to hold the position. Russia wins if they can clear the militia defense. So Russia needs to kill the FOB, and militia need to defend the FOB. Um, it's cut and dry, but it is an interesting one uh, nonetheless, um, given the assets that we talked about at the beginning. Yeah, it looks like, looks like militia is just starting to get everybody spawned in here on the trench. The trench that we saw the current Russian team defend or try to defend last time. So it looks like Shadowed Ritual and his squad leaders, OD Tap, Satan, Carpy, and Xbit, are going to try and defend in this two part trench here. They're going to try who knows what at this point, but hopefully they're going to give us a good showing here. Yeah, and if, if you didn't catch the last round, um, uh, Militia put up a valiant defense, but ended up falling to the Russians at the in the end. Um, and they, um, they ended up losing that thing. Uh, but they, I mean, they did a really good job of holding their positions and pulling back when they needed to. They just got overwhelmed by Russia with some good smokes and good pushes on their part and great nades. We saw some amazing grenades coming out last round, which are really key in clearing the trench. Yeah. Who do you, who do you have over on Russia's side again, commanding and squad leading? Yeah, so let's let's run that, that down. It's a good point. Um, for Russia, this round, we have uh, squad one is Sightless. Squad two is CMYK Matter. Squad three is Nasty Nate. Squad four is Tedish. And command, as always, seasoned veteran, best pony, uh, stepping up to the plate. Yeah, so with best pony, I've always seemed to notice, at least in, when I play with him on our servers, that he's really fond of a rushing tactic. Uh, blitzing a point and trying to be aggressive and quick. What do you think he's going to do this round, if you had to guess, based on, on playing with him? You know, it, if I had to guess, if I had to guess, I would say something similar. Honestly, I think you're you're pretty close. Uh, you're, like, right on track there. Um, you know, if I had to guess, I actually think he might even opt for the... I think he might even opt for the northern take. Um, the northern approach, which we didn't see last time. Um, so before we get into the briefing stuff, I want to run over militia uh, squad leads. So squad one is OD Tap, squad two is Satan, squad three Carpy, squad four is Expit, and commanding militia this round is Shadowed Ritual. Um, they had a great round as Russia last round, see if they can keep up the success. Yeah, it looks like this round, in other than different than last round, I'm fumbling over myself here. Uh, Shadow Ritual opted to put the radio in the southern trench this time. On the north edge of it, but in that southern trench. Looks like... Yeah, it looks like Shadow mm -hmm. Ritual is starting his brief here. Yeah, so let's hop on board and let's take a listen to what their, what their master plan is. There's like a big clump of trees to the uh, south. That's what they're going to watch. Hey, come on guys. Safety shovels. Watch it. God, tap. All right. Squad two. Satan is going to be north of the fob and the uh, the house, the, that, that little farmhouse. 
don't try and hold that farmhouse too hard. It's actually super easy to get, um, like super easy for them to assault. So don't even try and hold it too much, and don't be afraid to fall back if you need to. Squad 3 is going to take the Dishkateki and head to Coyote Ridge to the uh, the south. And they're going to set up and wait for the... It's a, it's a super likely spot that they can set up and get Overwatch like we did. Or they'll be able to fire onto the north and cover one as they... Uh, as they uh, sorry, cover two as they try and take guys out on the north. It's got really good sight lines. They're going to be able to see for miles. Squad 4 is going to be split up. You're going to have pretty... You're going to have a really... It's going to be a hit or miss job. It's going to be either go really well for you or not well at all. Sorry. You're going to have a fire team on the east watching the uh, the barn. And you're going to fire a team on the north. The scout is going to go on the north and try and set down a mine on this road. And try and cut off the M2B as they move through. You're basically scouting parties. I want you... If, if it's too many people, like if it's the whole platoon, you're going to lay low and wait for them to pass you. And then try and hit him in the back. If there's a, if it's only a scout or so, you're able, to, you're free to engage. Mainly, uh, you're there for information. Um, and if you can fall back, fall back. But don't try and run through that open field if you're being shot at. Uh, are there any questions? Cool. If there are no questions, squad leads, break them out for final details, and uh, we'll call for live. All right, so we're just coming out of the brief. It looks like um, Russia is um, starting to brief now. Um, we'll have to see kind of what they come up with. Uh, the, the vehicle I'm looking at right now is what I mentioned earlier, which is the MTLB. Um, it is a key. It's it is a key portion uh, or key uh, ingredient asset of the Russian. Uh, um, strategy as we kind of saw last round um, it is very good at moving troops around and providing fire support um, and that's super key on this map where um, you know the best way to win can be to fake them out um, if you over they over commit to one side of the trench um, then you're good on the other side so I'm, I'm curious to see like how this MTLB um, is gonna be used it's not fast. It's not fast. It is. Um, it's got uh, you know a a decent uh, armament on it. It's very very bulky. Um, it is loud. It can take a lot of hits though, as you can see. And it actually carries. I think the most important important part um, for our ops is that it carries 19 infantry, um, which is critical uh, because you know you're not getting infinite vehicles or anything. So it's hard to move people around. Um, quickly, um, so I think that 19 infantry carrying count is actually maybe one of the more important things um, that the vehicle has, and I think it's also very hard to deal with. So I, it's going to be on militia to deal with um, the MTLB however they can. Hey, why, why don't we uh, take a look at Best Pony in his brief. It looks like we've got it started. We might be able to catch part of the plan. So why don't we take a listen real quick, see if we can hear the rest of this. First part of that trench, then we're going to go in there. We're going to pour a bunch of grenades into the next part. And then after that, we're just going to ride down on them, take down their fob. And after that, we'll worry about stuff, uh, worry about further contact as they come in, because once we've done that, we'll honestly, most of their teams will be dead, first of all. And uh, second, we'll have accomplished our mission objective, so if we die, we die, but we're going to take down that fob. All right, make sense? Yeah, quick yep. question, yep. Best Pony. Yes, sir. Sorry, sure. If we can see the fob, like, dead on, like, it's very visible, do heat rockets do any damage to it? Heat rockets will, in fact, take the fob down significantly. If you have a visual on the radio, like you can actually see it and you have a heat shot on it, I would not hesitate to take it. That That is a good shot. You can you can, you can pretty much destroy the fob with uh, two lats. You can bring it down to half health. So if you can get four heat shots on it, that's as good as, like, 30 seconds worth of shovel dig. So, cool. by all means. Because one thing that I... Noticed that Although I'd recommend use... use frag rockets. If you have a direct visual on the fob, yeah. there's someone hiding right near it, so just soften it up with some frag rockets first. 
Yeah, because the 50 cal and the 30 mic mic does destroy fobs now too. This is so correct. Don't the... don't focus on taking down the the fob yeah, radio. Don't, don't like I'm just the saying, objective, I'm just but it's not the primary objective. It's it's the I'm just well. Saying. It is. It is. And it isn't the primary objective. The primary the objective, objective is to, to secure the area, but the the fob is what we're after. Um, but we're after the fob, is <laughs> in we're we're gonna kill everyone on it first. So don't worry about taking it down without killing the guys on it. That it's pointless. We we have to get rid okay. of it and the people there. Once we've secured sure that that's... trench and fob, then we'll worry about uh how the rest of it's gonna go. But yeah, don't don't uh, worry about yeah. the fob worry... as much as you worry about the people on it. I got uh, one question. Uh, what about if the other team are doing exactly what we uh, what we did last game, like like a squad uh, flanking through the walls, through through the woods? What we should do? The idea is that we're going to have the element of surprise. Say they have a fire team up here on this farm, and say they have a fire team down here in this this little ditch. Yeah. Yep. They're not going to spot us until the command MTV rolls up and opens fire, and they're not going to realize how big of an element is up there until all of our squads are crashing down on them. So by the time those fire teams start shifting off to come and hit us, right, we're already going to be in the tree line, and, like, it's going to be completely secure. We're, we're just already... It's already... It's going to be a non-issue because we're going to get there and we're going to break through their front line and then smash that fob before their, their flank squads have time to catch up. It's Roger it's that, basically a blitzkrieg. the The idea is we're gonna t smash through and take down that fob before they have time to react. If we give them time to react, they can definitely shift forces around and cause trouble for us. But if we make sure that we just aggressively eliminate that fob, we can catch them by surprise and wipe them out before they have a chance to do anything. So Operation Stampede without the IEDs. Yeah, Operation Stampede, but we have an armored vehicle, so <laughs> much better. What if there's an enemy squad in that town? If there's an enemy squad in that town, so the only way they can get to that town is if they send a bunch of logistics trucks up there, the, the, the SPD technical, and we're going to see or hear those vehicles as we approach if they're running that stuff up. Uh, definitely maintain you know, caution. Don't just run around willy-nilly through the town. Obviously, make sure that you're keeping security on your flanks, like all. Make sure you're watching out for contact, but I don't anticipate enemy forces in the town. If there are... We'll just do what I did last time when that happened. There was, like, a guy who shot one of the squad leads in the town. Uh, one and two will commence the assault with the support of the MTLB, providing cover for them to assault the farmhouse, and three and four will catch up when they can and act as a second wave of attackers. Make sense? Yep. Yep. All right. Now let's, uh, let's get going. Yes, World War One tactic. The best... So yeah, other other squads in the MTLB just don't get any of your guys in until. All right, so we just heard Russian the Russian plan. It's going to be pretty similar, flanking around the outside. Um, I'm curious, Google, what um, which technical did uh, right, militia opt for? Because they can take either the SPG or the Dishka Techie. Yeah, unlike Best Pony, they opted to take the Dishka Technical. You can see it. You can see it here on my screen now. That's okay. So the Dishka Technical. Is like totally different than the MTLB. Um, it's it's similar to the S the SPG Techie, obviously, in that it's very quick. It's got a high offensive capability with that with that uh, dish gun machine gun on, on there. Um, obviously, it's really easy to die in that thing. <laughs> it's very easy to kill, um, and the carrying capacity is pretty low. Um, so the way I would expect that thing to be used is as an emplacement to um, as an emplacement to hold off infantry and possibly run down the MTLB. Um, but it's an important piece. Of, it's an important piece of the uh, militia arsenal, especially with that offensive capability that you can see, uh, as well as the speed. If they do decide to chase the MTLB now, as the MTLB is not quick, it is slow. Yeah. Well, I am looking forward to seeing how they use that. Is whether they're going to use it as an additional emplacement. Yeah, or if they're going to use it for a quick strike. Well already. And yeah. so once again, just to kind of go over objectives, Russia is going to attempt to clear the militia out of this trench. And their main objective is this thing you can see on my screen now. It's a fob radio. And this fob radio in 
in a vanilla game is used, and in our ops here, obviously, is used to place down things like this Habs you can see in the background, machine gun emplacements, sandbags, barbed wire, all sorts of things. And it's essential to a lot of our ops. Usually a it's a key objective. So that's what they're going to try and take tonight. They're going to try and get that radio down like they did last time, like Russia did last time. Shadowed Ritual is going to attempt to keep that secure while Best Pony assaults it. And all you have to do to get rid of that fob radio, the Ford operating base, is to either dig it up or have enough people near it that it goes down by um, proximity. Um, so it's just a, it, it's just a, it's a tour de force. Um, yep. It looks like we're live here and the defenders are spreading out. Yeah, it looks like we got a couple transport trucks heading, like um, westbound like 15, on the highway and that, uh, MTLB, uh, is headed straight south. So it looks like we're probably going to wrap around. It looks like uh, Shadow Ritual here has has a few guys spreading to the north to this road. Get a, an advance warning if they're coming from the north. And Shadow Ritual is probably wary of what we were talking about earlier with Best Pony and his rush tactics. So I think he, he's wanting to get as much advance warning as possible. It's a pretty similar rollout to what we saw last time with the, uh, mm -hmm. some people head, heading up onto the ridge. Um, actually, Expit Squad is pushing out a little farther. They're going into the gas station area, um, which is not what we saw last time. Last time, they were pretty much limited to the trees and the houses on the northern side. Um, but they're going to get nice advance warning here, um, as well as I bet their scout's going to start laying mines down here as well, uh, if I had to guess. But they'll get plenty of warning being up, uh, up in, uh, near the gas station. Sounds like someone has may have audio on the MTB. Like I mentioned, it was really, really loud. This is exactly what this group is here for. Is to get audio on these on these vehicles. Audio truck also with the MTL. MTLB is in kilo six. Keypad six. Guys, Bravo has stuff yet? Yeah, don't engage. So we've got looks like the Lodgy and the trans here, full dismounts. I know Expit's fire team that we're looking at right here to to your left. Um, I know they see and hear the vehicles. He has stopped. It's just north of me, about 100 meters. We're hopping over with Crispy. So just lay low. Crispy's the one who's actually probably got the best chance at seeing uh, or hearing um, these dismounts. And I know he, he called out um, the trucks coming in. So they have a good idea. Um, and my guess would be that the... Russians are looking to drop a fob and set up a firebase, and the militia really trying not to let them have it. It looks like <laughs> looks like he's not sending anybody to this south ridge. Best pony possibly sticking mostly to the north, east, and west. They sent a squad for security to this south ridge, but there looks to be no need for it right now. So yeah, that's an advantage is what you see here, which is if you don't send, if you don't move everyone around, you've all of a sudden you've got like a giant hammer um, that's ready to crash in as they're moving towards Sexyton right now. A full squad is heading towards him. Crispy actually may have eyes on him. They're right past a fence um, that he's got his back to. So the chance, there's a chance that he's going to hit some contact here along with Sexyton and the rest of his fire team. Yeah, and... Yeah, Xbit hiding in this house. CMYK Matter came with just just in a few feet of him. You can see Xbit here hiding behind the fence in this little garden. Enemies, enemies. CMYK Enemies. Matter actually ran right up to that fence. To to <laughs> Best Pony driving by in his MTLB. So server error actually was spotted. Uh, was spotted by Nasty Nate and his squad. Uh, which is kind of a mistake because they know there's at least one person up here now. I don't, they definitely don't know how many there are, but server error was spotted, so it's not a, an entire secret. As Crispy may run into contact right here, Tommy's running in. Crispy, you're gonna get destroyed. I mean, oh, that is some oh. discipline. It's Crispy he, holding his fire. 
Oh, I should have placed my fucking IE. That right was there. amazing. He's not. Yeah, he's asking take for the shot. Right? Uh, yeah, free to fire. That is Whatever. so well yeah, done. Right. Getting the info. Right, guys, I need some air. And I. Th okay. I need to know do we have dismounted? Watch out. I, I, I have dismounted on me facing west. I'm facing west 269. Oh. Hey, Alright, so what you're looking at right now is Chris is it's crispy staring at one guy and I'm looking right at an IED that's sitting on the road. Server Air's ID is sitting pretty much on this road and I'll actually show you on my map right here. It is right exactly in the center of my screen. Um we have an, we have a full squad pushing up there. It's actually a mine. It's not an ID in this it's road. It's not an ID, it's a mine. Yep, it's this a mine MTL. right here. So he, the question is now, can they disarm the mine? Do they pay, are they paying attention? Oh, crispy actually fig, gets dropped. It's crispy. Yep, his discipline paid off early, but he didn't take the shot, and now he paid for it. Yeah, they don't even see it, or they're not going for it. Maybe it's not in their heads. But this mine is just a few feet from that MTLB. We'll see if and they decide crispy, to drive over it. Crispy. He did die, but he did give a lot of info for his team. I guarantee. Yeah. Oh, this MTLB may hit this mine. Yep. Oh, it's going. It's diverting off road. Yeah, ho, 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 boy. That's a good idea from them. We're gonna kick this shindig off. As it just escapes the mine that's on the road right there. Yeah, it looks like. Crusty the Sailor, Little Gin, Red Stripe, Saloon. They're pushing out to this small band of trees here. Looks like they may be trying to get a, a flank, get more information. Every inch of this area is an unknown for them as they push. You know, they're they're pushing with caution, being careful. All right, I might as well fucking blow it up. Server error goes down. Oh no, server error goes down. Yeah, it looks like Krusty the Sailor shoots him as he was dialing his phone to blow up an IED. That could have oh been a my. huge thing. Oh, that is so tragic. And it's so well played from Krusty to make that shot happen. Because this is right as the Russian push is happening. And if you can do that, you can throw total chaos. If you can get some kills, you can throw total chaos into the, into the assault. And this is like a full-on northern attack. They're not even playing... With with going slow here, um, MTLB is doing a, a good job putting shots in this house, trying to cover for the guys crossing the field. Yeah, it looks like uh, Satan and his squad are here in this barn. These guys are crossing an open field. Now, Bus Pony is doing a good job of putting fire on this with the MTLB, keeping Muff Bandit, Satan, and the other guys here. Keeping them suppressed as these troops push across. Yeah, as you can see, it is very hard to operate, especially when you know you're not coming back when you're getting suppressed by all that stuff. So actually, all in all, a pretty good assault, except CMYK Matter goes down. So that's a squad lead down. Um, unfortunately, gets sniped from the trench. Um, but all in all, they didn't make it across this field and made it across pretty successfully. Most of us are dead. I understand. It looks like... The Muff Bandit, Eber, and XF clumped together here. If a grenade came over, that would take them all out. We mentioned it a couple times, but something we cover is battle spacing. Especially on defense when you only have one life. But it looks like they're doing work. The Muff Bandit takes down Piddle. He's taking shots at these people. Oh, they're shooting back at him. They said, nope, we've had enough. Time to take a shot back. Meanwhile, there's also a firefight going down even farther east. So this is fighting is all spread out here. Some trade going down um, farther east near these storage compounds. Currently, uh, clearing this compound. So there's the militia getting a couple kills and pulling back. That's the way to do it. The muff bandit here just taking shots and stalling this push from the north by this house. Oh, a grenade oh. damages him. Is he going to be able to bandage in time? It looks like he's really hurt. Give me a bandage. I need a bandage. Oh, he implores his medic oh, to patch him up. 
which is allowed in our ops. The medics can heal them back to full health, but if they go down, they cannot bring them back. Looks like he came to his medic. He's getting full health. So something important to mention here is all this fighting has been crazy and, and fun, but there's an entire like squad all the way still south on the hill for militia. So anything you're seeing up here is like 20 is like 75% of their force. It's not even all of them. Um, so I, I would actually say that, you know, Russia got pretty messed up right now. Um, they got pretty messed up uh, with this push. Um, at, cause militia has the hip on the hill. Uh, and they've they've still got the trench, and they've even got most of the northern woods by that house, uh, pretty locked down. Basically, we're gonna swing around the south side through the the bottom burn, hit him from there. Uh, one, try and go put some more pressure on the farmhouse just to distract. Ooh, and the last person at that house that. looks like it was Pit Viper. Um, gets popped by Muff, I believe. Um, so it's really good hold of that house. I mean, the house is super hard to take, and they made it up there fine, but they didn't actually make get the get the execution on it. Yeah, and that stalls that entire squad that tried to cross this open field. The Muff Bandit taking at least three down by himself. Now it looks like there is another push. Got, uh, looks about two squads worth pushing here on the west side. Yep, we've got... Oh, th that squad that you're looking at, Google... <laughs> Nasty they may have squad. lost a lot of they may have lost a lot of people at that house, but they did get it, two squads across the field, um, mm -hmm. which is very important. <laughs> Not easy to do. Yeah, it was a great distraction for sure. Best pony sacrificing a squad to get more of his forces close. If that's what he did, I'm not sure that was the intent. I'm sure he wanted them all to make it and take that house. But things don't always go that way. I think we're, we're taking yeah, and and like we like we mentioned, um, that uh, that squad all the way south on those rocks, um, that you're seeing right now is was putting shots on this storage the storage container area, um, doing work with the machine guns that they've got up there, uh, keeping their heads down, um, slowing the Russian advance, um, which is very important because it allowed them to adjust a lot. Uh, to what they, to what they, um, where they can figure out the weaknesses and the defense might be. Sorry. Uh, yeah, 285. Where do you see these? In the tree line? Oh, uh, yeah, they yeah, I saw them. Yeah. yeah, I see them. Looks like they're trying to assault this house again. They're going back for more, huh? Yep, the Muff Bandit, XF, Jax. And who do we have here? Night in jail? <laughs> Clever play. <laughs> they are all... Oh! Somebody puts a rocket into that group, takes down one. Looks like Carson. Muff. It looks like Muff is lats. Sent... Oh, and he damages two more. That's the way to use your lats effectively. Putting the frag round into the group. Miyamoto might bleed out here. He is going to be very close. It yeah, looks like he bandaged himself up. They're throwing smokes to try and cover their advance. Nasty Nate going crazy and charging in all by himself here. Yep, Nasty Muff Bandit might not. Oh, Nasty Nate wins the encounter. Woo! Oh, and then he dies. It's a trade. Squad lead and uh, Nasty Nate and the Muff Bandit trade for for each other. Yeah, it looks like they're the rest of this squad here with Nasty Nate down. I mean, his fire team lead. So every squad lead gets two fire team leads who can, if the squad lead goes down, he can transfer his comms over to them. So they might still have comms with the commander, with the with Confirmed. best pony, or rather, yeah, best pony. So they might still be able to get instructions. We're taking contact up. By yeah. So, so the, the there's been a push going down uh, on the west side wall. That's been going down. We have a full squad in the MTLB pushing these guys on the rocks. Actually, a lat shot went out to uh, hit the MTLB and then actually hit short a little bit. So I don't think it took any or much damage. Uh, which is unfortunate for the defenders because this MTLB is going to start wrecking them right now. As you can see, 
laying down shots on those rocks, forcing everyone off, allowing his squad to push up driver, underneath driver, up the rocks, which is exactly how you should be doing it. The MTLB advances over the top, and they really start to clean up this fire base, which is a, a good idea because it's going to be incredibly hard to take um, anything uh, while you're running away from M uh, uh, MG fire. I don't have an eye. I don't have an eye. The Dishka sniffed at the MTLB position. Alright, wait for it to come around. MTLB sees it first, though, starts to shoot at it. They pull the Dishka Techie away. It is on fire, though. It is not looking great. Although he's still back on it. This MTLB is going to be a huge problem as these lat kits start to drop. Looks like Russia managed to take this house from the militia. I don't know if they pulled back or they managed to kill them all. But it looks like they managed to take this house a key point of cover for them and a good staging point for their next push. They did disable. They didn't kill the, the driver, but they did scare him into getting out of his logistics truck. So they're effectively done getting Lodgy runs. Militia is. This This is crazy right now. The MTLB actually killed the Dishkateki while that farmhouse is being taken. And it's now just rolled up basically on... On top of militia positions. Oh, the IED goes off. It was a really smart IED. MTLB took um, a, probably a little bit of damage, but it's it's still doing okay. Unfortunately, there was been a couple near misses for it. The resources are starting to run low on militia. Yep, they're slowly being whittled down to just the group in that trench. That is no small thing to have that defensive trench, though. It's still going to take Russia a very concerted effort to get in there. Hmm. Actually, I think, I think the militia side, I think there's people still on the ridge as the MTB starts unloading into the trench because they're mortaring their own position where their previous position was. I think they think the Russians are up there, but they're actually not. They're moving quickly under the MTB fire. Another lag kit misses on the MTLB. That's at least one dead and another miss. And I don't think the MTLB is taking much damage. Just maybe something from uh, making some uh, a little bit from the IED maybe. Maybe some splash damage from a, a rocket but not much. Looks like they're getting ready. They're smoking the north side of this trench here. They're throwing smokes into the field. Oh! Somebody just detonated an IED. Destroying oh my floor. gosh. Are you or, kidding me? Yep. It's like they knew right as soon as they tried. How many kills did he get? It looks like he got four kills yeah, that. with that IED. Oh, what and an IED. He, and he damaged Miyamoto there, too. Wow. Oh that was effective at scaring them behind rocks. Yeah, they got scared. Every single one of those those troops pulled backward away from that explosion holy cow i saw that from all the way down here i felt that one yeah that i nuts. jumped i jumped in my chair a little bit i was a little close to that it, that strategy and actually they used it up on the ridge uh, militia did as well is like take a position up fall back from that position and drop out an ied where you just were and as they push over your position to clear you out you just pop the ied and you'll get a bunch of kills, and as you saw, <laughs> I mean, it worked out pretty well um, for that northern end of that trench, for a militia at least. The only issue now is that, like we were talking about before, it's not bad to have some troops outside of the main objective area, and like pretty much all of militia that's left is in the southern half of this trench. Which looks like a lot of people now, but when you start throwing grenades and stuff in there, um, it's going to end up being a lot less than you think. There's no really any way that the militia can maneuver. Oh, another great IED takes down two, and Lilijin takes damage. What? Are you kidding me? That, that's six kills with two IEDs, and, it's, and heavy damage on both of them, too. 
Oh my goodness gracious. You just don't <laughs> see that. Believe. Yeah, that's just something you don't see in the ops. It's so difficult to time those and get troops around them and just know when to put them, set them off. And they, the scouts still have to stay alive for that to happen. They, and they exactly. do an excellent job of that. Oh my gosh. And militia is still sending mortar rounds out, possibly to to hit known locations here. They're shooting lat rockets at this fortification, but the sandbags are preventing them from coming inside. They're just shallow. So this defensive position is working really well for militia right now. I tell you what. Oh, this is stalled. And a mortar takes down Lil'jin. I mean, this southern push has been totally shut down by explosives. Yeah, and Russia's MTLB is on the trench right now. Just shooting everybody it can see. Best Pony, Command himself, is manning that MTLB. Just tearing apart this trench. He's already got two kills. Three kills in this trench with that gun. They all have to stay low and keep out of sight. That's the thing is, as good as the explosives have been for Militia, they haven't killed the MTLB yet. And they've actually failed to do significant damage to it, I think, which oh. is pretty much, uh, you know, it's going to end up being spelling the end of the game, more or less, if they can't figure out a way to deal with it. Yeah, Ted is trying to, to shoot into the trench here and take down this machine gunner. Pandascope gets off the gun and shoots Tedish first. That's not something you see very often. Tedish, one of our long, long time members, and Copy that. yeah, Tedish is not new to any of this. No, not at all. So one interesting thing is Juzu is coming in behind. Actually, he's the lone militia behind um, this northern advance, taking some pot shots. I don't think the Russians have any idea. Uh, I don't think they have any idea what's going on. Pony just said the MTLB is out of ammo. Oh and and I think he just oh, that got killed. Oh boy, the MTLB is out of ammo. I don't think. Oh no, I gotta be honest. V44N bad nade and kills himself. I gotta be honest, I think it would have been better if they pretended the MTLB still had ammo in it <laughs> instead of abandoning it. Yeah, that noise it makes is intimidating. Just drive it in circles around. Definitely. Now it looks like the defenders are throwing smokes out to try and block lines of sight. And Juzu is still behind. Still running around. He's running by the farmhouse now. Um, he's still behind uh, all of oh these enemies. Yeah, it's like at the end here, everybody has saved their grenades and they're throwing them into these trenches. Oh, Dermaplast takes out the Senate. A grenade takes out Kennet. Leaves OD Tap by him. Well, not quite by himself. But it leaves him with just a few other people here. Cantador, Drifty Sky, Dermaplast. Look like they're the last one's alive, right? I believe that's the last of the... Last of the Russians. Jews, you could do away with all three of them right now if he's paying attention. Dermaplast has, looks like he has an angle on him. He takes down, I think that's Cantador. Switchy Sky's still up. Jizu takes down the second one, gets killed by Dermaplast. But that means Dermaplast is the last one alive. Boy, this has been quite the swing in a battle. I did not think the militia were going to come this far. And all of a sudden, they get a bunch of kills with really good explosives. Do a really good job of throwing their nades, and Russia's having a rough time. Yeah, Dermoplast might try and dig this radio and basically oh. go for the objective. They've got five guys down here at the end of the trench. Six guys. One, two, three. Yes. And that's the yeah, other. That, oh, that's it. Oh, there he, he goes. And got killed. I think that's GG. That is that GG. Looks, that is the it end is of Operation Chain. GG, Chainlink. folks. Woo! Does everyone take a big, deep breath? Take a nice, deep breath after that one. That was very well executed.
by um, by militia staggering their explosives, putting them in good places. That's good for on the the command shadowed and all of his squad leaders did a really good job of staggering and scouts did a really good job of staggering those out. Um, that was a fun one to watch, man. Yeah. So it sounds like um, if you guys want to, if you guys hang out for a little bit, um, we're actually going to get the now militia commander shadow ritual on here. We're going to talk to him about the about the op, do a little bit of a breakdown. If you guys are curious about kind of about what goes in in uh, into a command, uh, what goes through a commander said. And I'm curious as well because that was very well executed uh, from from the defense that second round. Yeah, what I want to know is whether he chose those IED locations or whether he left that to his squad leads. Yeah, I am curious. I am curious about that um, because it seemed like there was a a really good strategy of falling back from your position and then dropping the ID um, at uh, at the feet and then popping it after you're gone. Um, So actually, we've got Shadowed in here. Welcome, man. Welcome, Shadowed. Was a really good op, dude. Oh yeah, De- definitely, definitely a lot of fun. So okay, so I gotta ask that second round. The, do you know how well your IEDs did or no? I uh, I actually died right as the, the the northern IED and the southern IED went off, and it was I, it, it was impressive. Like I, that was exactly our plan was to to let them come into us. Those those were the only two IEDs I specified. Like they're going here and here. I was like, you're they're, you're gonna wait for them to fall back, and then you're gonna you're gonna blow them, you're gonna just draw them in, you're gonna blow them. Because that's the most likely approach. You really can't come into that trench from from the open field. You're, high, you're gonna have to come in from the north and the south. And they they did they did work. So, Google, do you want to tell them how how well they did, or do you want me to? Because it was <laughs> a lot. Yeah, that northern one. I was looking at that as they started a push. <laughs> Your IED went off, killed four guys right out the gate damaged one and it pulled that entire pushback they all basically turned around and ran from it so it was extremely effective at stalling their 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 planned push anyway oh the southern one got two more so (laughs) so what goes in so i i like what goes into that decision making like is that just experience in ops like those big decisions is that just playing the op over and over is it just knowing oh they're going to clear this position off and we're going to lay an ied down here or is it up to your squad leads? Like, like how does that work? Uh, a lot of the times, it, it just comes down to experience, not in just playing the ops. It's just it's knowing like how how would you want to come into the objective? Like, how how do you want to approach it? And 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 really, like it just made it just made the most sense. Like, you're not going to want to come in from the open field. You're going to want to come in from from cover, like using the tree line or something like that, and and just trying to lay laying traps down for them, and and hoping that. The longer the game goes on, the the more lax they get in, in their basic training of you know spacing and you know just constantly communicating, and it and it ended up working out for us in the end. Yeah. So we've also got Pony, who is the other commander, uh, for the other side. Good game. Good game. Uh, both of you guys. Um, oh, yeah, good game. <laughs> good game. <laughs> uh, so so Pony. So. Uh, Shadow was talking about like kind of what goes into like the, like the planning phase for commanding. Uh, what I want to know from you is something similar, but how much? So everyone has their own commanding style. Like, what do you leave up to your SLs and your fire team leads and stuff like that as far as like movement, or do you like kind of have a plan from the get go, or is it a little bit of like a play by ear thing? Uh, it's mostly a plan from the get-go. I have contingencies for when things go wrong, which is why you saw when we pushed the farmhouse and that did not work out as intended, I immediately shifted forces around and tried to get something else going. But in large part, I have a grand scheme that I'm going to run, and then I work off of that as things happen. Yes, so it, it, it's like mostly on the fly, right? I mean, like, it, it, it's kind of, it seems like, you know, it's it's here's the plan and it's all going to go, you know, all totally wrong and we'll figure it out from there. So is that mostly on you or is that still on the SLs? Like when, when shit starts to hit the fan? 
Uh, when shit starts to hit the fan, it's my job to salvage it. Um, it's really the SL's job to keep their particular part of the plan from being the shit hits the fan part in the beginning. <sighs> Some of it's out of their control, like sometimes they just hit contact when they're not supposed to hit contact because there's just a squad where we didn't expect it. That's that's on me, but sometimes, you know, like, there'll be a, a missed shot that needed to be made or, like, a push into an area that they're not supposed to push into, and that's kind of... I leave a lot of the implementation of where to go up to them, and that's... That's the, really the only place that they have room to uh, mess up. I have a specific question for you on the second round, Best Pony, when you were in that MTLB. Sure. Right, uh, just north of that gas station, they had a mine on the road. Did you guys see that and avoid it on purpose, or did you just just happen to drive off the road there? As a rule, I don't drive on roads, if possible. So you didn't actually see it there? You didn't just see it, just followed, followed my personal rules for <clears throat> road driving. And... Nice got lucky i guess <laughs> very so, lucky um, yes so i i would do i do want to find out like from both of you uh i want to go to shadow first and then over to pony like how hard is it so i'm i'm a squad leader mostly and it's difficult for me when i'm squad leading how hard is it for you guys to not get in the action with like just pull your rifle out and go in because it's very hard for me at least when i'm in a position like that um to not like want to go help like like personally until you know it gets really bad um how like how difficult is that and like kind of what do you do to deal with it um for for me like i have a really bad habit of leading by example and then being the first person to die and like this is like maybe my fifth or sixth time commanding and it happened a lot when i sl'd and i think that's really what, what's in the always in the back of my head is like hey you don't always need to be the first person in you know like you can let somebody else go in and your job is really just you always gotta, you, your job is the bigger picture. Like, you always gotta think about the bigger picture. Like, I need to stay back and make sure everybody's doing their job, not just that I can maybe get the one or two kills, you know? Like, it's not all about my Katie, it's more about making sure the team is doing what they need to do. Yeah, and Pony, what about what about for you? I, I cannot resist the allure of being at or near the front lines a lot of the time, trying to help support, just because there's, there's little things, right, that start to go wrong in the plane where you can go along and fix. Like, DSLs and FTLs can't babysit everyone all the time, but you can run up and say, hey, you, get on that dishka, or you can hop on it yourself for a couple seconds if it's unmanned and get a few kills. Or the second round, I think I gave a pretty good example of how I like to lead. If there's an armored vehicle available, perfect. I'll take that for command and sit in it and be able to provide support for my troops at the front lines, have a better idea of the situation, and just be able to make decisions on the fly more accurately than if I'm sitting 100, 200 meters back and I don't really see what the, the front line squad leads see. Got it. Got it. I like it. Um, thank you guys for stopping in. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, all over, we're streaming to a lot of places. Um, uh, everyone, all these people watching on like YouTube and Twitch and all that stuff. I, I, I just want to encourage you guys to keep coming out. It makes like this experience like especially special. Um, you know, we're here. We're streaming on twitchtv ups We're streaming on um, youtubecom ups um, So those are both going to be live, like like just like we were tonight. Um, that'll happen every Wednesday and normally twice on Saturday. This Some Saturday uh, sessions may have a, a single POV uh, cam rather than the full production like you're seeing here. Um, but most of the time we're going to have, you know, all of those those uh, uh, views and this like, cool, like the, all this work that's been put in behind the scenes. Um, we're going to have that available for you guys. Um, I just want to thank everyone who had a camera. I'm going to list them off, and it would not be possible without them, which is uh, a Muff, Crazy Russian, CMYK Matter, um, Xbit, Tedish, Carpy, Server Air 404, Krusty the Sailor, It's Crispy, Shad Shadowed. Um, thank you guys all for, for providing those cameras. Thank you to Penn so much. He's the man that you're not hearing or seeing who's put in all the work to make these awesome, like amazing streams happen. He's doing all this switching behind the scenes a uh, ton of work goes into that and and that's that's huge on on to him and really to the entire content creation team uh, that we have at squad ops i want to thank um google thank you for for sitting in the other chair today thank you for co-commentating it, it was a lot of fun I had a lot of fun yeah i, I hope to be back uh, with you guys um uh, like i said um youtube.com slash squad ups and twitch.tv slash squad ups Wednesdays and Saturdays, twice on Saturdays, um, we're going to be live. We're going to be letting you guys kind of see what we do uh, as far as the One Life stuff goes. 
uh, any questions, um, feel free to ask them in any chat. Come to our Discord. Um, we're there. We can answer all your questions. Um, that's it for me. I thank you guys again uh, for coming out uh, and, and watching, and I encourage you guys to do it, do it more. And I, I'll, I'm looking so forward to seeing you guys um, keep keep up uh, the participation with, with our streams and with our community. Uh, so thank you guys, um, and we will see you on Saturday. <laughs>